Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today we're so thrilled to be talking about HBO Max's Takeout. We are joined today by Lisa Ling, who's the host of the show and also an executive producer, as well as showrunner Helen Cho. Um, and I wanted to start by asking you about the way in which you kind of initially decided upon on the subjects and the conversations that you wanted to spark within these six episodes, because I know you were initially pitching and saying that you had enough stories for at least 20 episodes. Um, and when you realized it was six and that you were going to have to tailor it down, um, how did you kind of go about figuring out, well, what are like the key components and the stories that we want to bring people into as like this initial taster and jumping off point so that if we have another season down the line, that it's really kind of the foundation of what the show is? Ooh, that's a tough question because we did have a long list of possible um, locations and communities to explore. And ultimately, gosh, Helen, what, I mean, you know, we knew one had to be my family story mm -hmm. and we wanted to, we, we, we just found out about these incredible communities, um, some of which neither of us had ever heard about. And um, yeah, th th I mean, <laughs> That's kind of a cop out answer, but we just uh, we 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 just held out hope that we might have another season and more communities to explore because we literally could hit the ground running right now and uh, explore uh, quite a number of other communities. Uh, but Helen, Hel I don't yeah, know it how was um, we decided I, on the six, these six. Yeah, I think. Um... Part of it was we wanted to uh, feature sort of, for us, were really interesting, like unexpected stories as well. But I mean, if we have six, it was really important to us that, you know, um, I think a lot of times when we talk about Asian Americans, it's, you know, we're talking about East Asians. And for us, it was also important that we had, you know, Southeast representation and also South A Asian representation, like we have a Bangladesh episode, you know, and a Vietnam episode and a uh, Vietnamese episode. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really tough because there were so many other episodes that we wanted to make, but, you know, we only had six. So, I mean, there was that. And then there was the actual logistical reality of like, we're shooting this through COVID also. And so we were looking at locations um, that, you know, were safe. It was really important that our crew stay safe during this process, too. So that was a, you know, a factor as well. But really, you know, it was about telling these sort of what we felt like were um, in really interesting, unexpected stories um but also yeah we wanted it to feel more representative of you know asian america as, as you know as a very like vast and diverse diaspora yeah i mean when we found out about the manila men in southern louisiana we were just like what we have to tell the story and that there was a thriving japanese american community in boyle heights which is known to be a mostly latino community we thought we have to tell this story. So really it was about, okay, um, which stories do we have to tell right now? Um, and which can possibly wait for another season, which we're, 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 we're hoping that we get. <laughs> yeah, and I think I was also looking at what's been told already. I mean, if you look at a place like New Orleans, I think when you think about Asian Americans, a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of like stories about be the Vietnamese community in New Orleans, but I think that, you know, the Filipino community in New Orleans hasn't really been uh, touched upon as much. And so, yeah, looking at kind of what's already, you know, there. And, and like Lisa mentioned, for us, it's about, um, I think it's important for people to also realize that, you know, in any sort of like travel docuseries, you know, people always go like, well, why don't you go here or do that? And it's a very sort of singular, you know, we're looking at each each place in a very specific story, like, you know, Boyle Heights is a very, is a, is a, is a neighborhood within LA, you know, we're not looking at all the Japanese Americans, like all in California or even all in Los Angeles is a very sort of specific story that we were trying to tell. So yeah, just kind of being very intentional about what that, what that is. Right. The, this, the series tells a lot of stories with a lot of intimacy and a lot of detail, you know, particularly when you're going into all of these communities. And then at the same time, you also still always step back for the audience and give them the wider context and, and talk about, you know, different moments in time as well. And so when you watch the series as a whole, what's really wonderful is that each episode kind of builds upon the layers that you've already been constructing in the previous episodes. And, and there's things that you take away because of what you saw the episode before when you're watching the next one 
one, um, you know, you're bringing up the, the first episode about the Filipino community in Louisiana. Did you always know that that was going to be the foundational first episode? Because that's really, you know, the initial Asian community moving over and settling in the States, because that then gives us a lot of context when we watch the rest of the season or, or how did you kind of figure out what story needs to come next in the, in the linear structure of the series? We were just talking about this last <laughs> night. Helen and I said, I'm so glad we started this series with the, the Filipinos in Southern Louisiana because they were the first. <laughs> and I, I think that the Filipino community is often overlooked and I gotta say the Filipinos have just been so incredibly supportive and I think they're so appreciative and they deserve to have that first place. I mean, you know, the, the series, it, it, it's not like the first is any better than the last, but they deserve to be the very first episode of the series because they were the first Asians to arrive here and their stories really haven't been told. Um, and, and we really wanted to be able to expose people to Filipino cuisine, because let's face it, even though it's one of the biggest Asian American populations in this country, Filipino food isn't as ubiquitous as other Asian food. And so for a myriad of reasons, we decided to start with that episode. And, and, and Helen and I last night were just talking about how glad, um, you know, how, how, how happy we, we are that that's the episode we started with, because I just think the Filipino American community has just been so appreciative. And when it yeah. comes to, sorry, Helen. No, also, I'm so glad that you said that you felt that, you know, in watching it in that, in that order, because we didn't actually shoot it in that order. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we were also, you know, we were very careful to curate that experience because, you know, each episode was, intentionally shot and made to feel very different. Um, you know, in fact, you know, initially I think we thought that Lisa's episode, you know, the Sacramento personal family story would come first, but, you know, in thinking more about it as well, it's like to kind of set the audience up to be like, here's sort of like, you know, her sort of background and this authority on like this, this issue and this topic on this journey. But, you know, like the more you know, I thought about it is like, it's interesting because when you look at other sort of food travel shows, you know, and frankly, most of them are run by white males. Like they don't ever need a reason for an explanation as to why they're an authority in a particular place or going on this journey for this particular series. There's no sort of like, you know, and I, we felt like there's no reason that it kind of, there's something to prove here or that we need to have this sort of, you know, laid out in the beginning. So yeah, I'm really glad that we decided, um, you know, for the Filipino episode to be there first, because, you know, like we just mentioned, they, they were the first here. What's also really great is that every single episode has its own identity and sense of storytelling. And there's there's different ways that you visually tell the story on screen or that you bring us into, you know, places with different people that you're speaking to throughout the series. Um, and I know that in working with the directors on the show that you kind of didn't want to give them too much information about the other episodes so that you could have that really individual identity. Um, what was kind of the, the precipice or the reason that you really wanted to make sure that that you had that kind of unique storytelling within each episode and that it wasn't about trying to connect them together as you were filming with the directors. Helen, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, well, it was okay. I would just also clarify that it wasn't like I didn't let any of the directors or producers talk to each other. It was like, obviously, but I also, oh. wanted, well, <laughs> you know, I, I just wanted each episode, like you said, to have, you know, for it to be very distinct. And again, I think Asian Americans are so often lumped together that I really wanted each episode, um, we really wanted each episode to be representative and feel, you know, uh, whatever, however honest and however the portrayal of, you know, the directors that they wanted to tell these stories, to be able to tell the stories and not be influenced by someone else in their storytelling. So, um, and, and I think a lot of that to be, you know, Frank comes from my work that I did on Parts Unknown, we would be treating each episode like its own film. And I really wanted to carry that aspect of it to take out, but with a very Asian American centered perspective. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that, you know, in some, some episodes there's animation there, you know, uh, in other episodes there, you know, there's, it's kind of more quiet and there's beautiful cinematography in other episodes is maybe more emotional and, 
Um, I really do think that each episode um, has a very distinct uh, style and tone and pace and um, and that was very intentional. <laughs> yeah, Helen Helen specifically discouraged the directors from seeing one another's work <laughs> or talking too much about about the work. And I think it shows and that has what has allowed for each of the episodes to have such a distinctive identity. And one of the other things that we're particularly proud of is when you watch this series, it's not cheesy, you know, because for so long, other people have told our stories, if they've even been told at all. And when you watch Takeout, it's very clear that these are stories that are being told by Asian Americans. Um, there's an authenticity to these episodes that I really don't think you'll find anywhere else. And many of the people involved in our show um, didn't have as much experience as people on other new shows might have had. And, and, and Helen specifically took a lot of risks, but wanted to ensure that people who might not have had experience, but, but whose talent she saw and recognized had an opportunity to gain that experience. And the level of investment of our team was so was just so palpable because none of us had ever worked with as many Asian Americans on a crew ever. I may have worked with two Asian Americans on a crew in, a, in an over 30 year career in television. And so the fact that most of our crew was Asian American and just look, our days were long and hard but they just they 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 put in so much effort. They were so passionate. They're so proud. And and we were also just talking about the way they talk about the show when they post on social media, um, with just that that unprecedentedness for them. And that just really it really feels good. And it really um, makes me feel so proud that. You know, all of these people just so rose to the occasion. They gave it their all and delivered on what what I think is an incredibly special show. Yeah. And, and I love that you're bringing that up there, Lisa, with the fact that you had a lot of crew members who maybe this was their first time directing on a television show or someone stepping into a new role and hasn't worked on a series of this scale before, um, because that's also true for you, Helen. This was your first time show running, you know, but even when you're talking about your, you know, how you were bringing experience from from working on Anthony Bourdain's show, you know, there's so much that you're bringing to the table with your perspective and your experience. And so even though you were stepping into the role of showrunner on this series for the first time, what we're kind of the moments that you had where you suddenly realized that everything that you've done on all of the other projects that you've worked on was really kind of cohesively coming together in that moment. Mm, that's really interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think there are a lot of parts along the way, you know, I think that even in the field, um, you know, a lot of, not only Asian Americans, you know, people of color, women of color, uh, and who are working in this industry, I think so often get overlooked and they have the talent. They just don't have the experience and they don't get the opportunities. And I think a lot of times it's a numbers game, you know, like any other craft or skill, it's like you, you know, you need the practice and you need to be able to have the experience to get better. Um, but if you can't get the experience, how can you get better? It's like this, almost like this like loop. Right. And, um, you know, I remember the first time that I started directing, I mean, it took me, I produced for many years and I finally got the opportunity to direct. And once I started directing, it was like, oh, I've actually been doing this job for many, many years, just not with that title. And so I think it was that, you know, sometimes in the field, even my own second guessing of do I do I know what I'm doing? Do, is this like is this the right position for me? But, you know, every step of the way, like whether it was in the field and maybe it was mentoring uh, a more junior director, you know, it kind of reinforced all those things that I think working in a in an industry that, you know, mostly is people who don't look like me, um, that sort of conditioning. Um, so that was really enlightening for me, you know, is to uh, be able to have this opportunity to have this position. But also, I think, you know, um, when when talking to our director producer team or our DPs about sort of the more experimental approach, you know, that I wanted to take with the, each episode and and kind of encouraging people to, um, 
yeah, to, to, to think sort of unconventionally about this sort of uh, genre, right? I think I also intentionally not, it wasn't, it wasn't just that there are people who I wanted to hire who are inexperienced, but also I didn't want to hire people who have travel docu experience really, because you're going to get the sort of same kind of show that, you know, you see on TV. So I wanted each episode to have, you know, maybe somebody who has, um, you know, has done more, you know, music sort of like videos, or maybe they've done more, you know, mood pieces that are experimental, um, but are again, personally invested. Um, so I think, I mean, all of those things really for me um, kind of, I think help prepare me in terms of show running um, is having that experience of being able to kind of experiment. I was very lucky on that show and that we did get to experiment a lot. Um, and to see that that was a possibility. Um, but it really wasn't until, you know, Lisa and um, part two and HBO like gave me the opportunity that I also, I also felt like this is something that I, that I can do. And not only can I do it, it's a huge responsibility and privilege to be in this kind of position. So, um, you know, I would be, it would be a huge mistake, I think, and a miss to not also pay that forward and, you know, um, you know, and elevate like all of these talented people that exist, but maybe have had, you know, hadn't had the opportunity. So. I mean, it, it was a big risk on Helen's part. I mean, <laughs> I, I said, I've been working in television for over 30 years and whenever I've had opportunities to have new shows, I want them staffed with people who know what they're doing, who you know you can rely on. And at Helen as a first time showrunner, you know, to take these risks on people who have never worked in TV, right? I mean, they've had some doc experience or, you know, um, you know had, a, had, had experience in other areas, but to have taken these, these big risks on people um, it, it initially caused me some concern. I was like, wow, I hope she knows what she's doing. But I, I also realized, and Helen kind of reinforced this way of thinking. And I, and I do this on the other show that I do, This Is Life as well, is if you see potential in people, we've been doing this long enough that if people need their hand held a little bit, we can do that. It might require a little more work on our part, but again, if we're ever going to expand that talent pool, we have to be willing to help people through and, and you know, perhaps hold their hands through things that they may not have experienced before. And look, it wasn't it it wasn't a super easy process. It was not totally seamless. Um, there were times during the production process where like, oh, what's you know, how are we gonna get through this? But we did. And it was because it was this incredible team effort and we just so believed in this show. Um but but the initial risk that Helen took, uh, the show wouldn't be what it is if Helen hadn't taken those incredible risks. Yeah, I really love that. And, and Lisa, I also wanted to talk about your stylistic approach in, in presenting the show because for the audience, you're really our conduit and our window into these conversations. You're the person that's bringing us inside of people's homes and, and into these, you know, really intimate discourses that you're having with people, um, you know, and what you do so well is that you're really giving them the space to share what they want to share with us, um, you know, and sometimes that's a conversation. Sometimes it's food that they're bringing to the table. Sometimes it's a G.I. Joe doll that really means something to them. Um, and I was interested in kind of what conversations you get the opportunity to have beforehand with them. You know, obviously there's a, there's a lot of like the production team who are connecting with people participating in the show, but for you in particular, what are the conversations that you're able to have beforehand, if any, or is it very much about finding that organic kinetic moment on camera and also just the way that it's so important for you to make sure that it's about giving them the space and giving them that moment? Well, look, this show is a very personal one to me for obvious reasons. But I've always tried in my work to really not be the focus. I'm the vehicle through which you can meet people and experience things. You know, again, this series was was certainly much more personal than the other things that I've done, but nevertheless, that is is what is important to me, giving people an opportunity to tell their own stories. Um, and I <laughs> I'm just like an innately curious person. So <laughs> I am constantly just asking questions of people and I get my hand slapped all the time 
to wait until cameras are rolling before I start kind of digging in. I just like can't help myself sometimes. And so um, sometimes I will literally sit in the car until they're ready <laughs> to, to roll. Um, and in the case of that G.I. Joe, I didn't know that he had that G.I. Joe in his bag. The, the, the producers and the directors knew. But I mean, that was when, when the young man in our episode five pulled out that G.I. Joe character of a 442nd regimental combat team uh, member. I'd never seen anything like that before. And, and, and that is a story that's very near and dear to my heart. And so that was <laughs> as organic uh, a, a moment as you get. And, um, and I've been looking on eBay to find one too, but I haven't been successful. Um, but yeah, so, so um, I, I will often meet the people that we interview, but I, I, I do my best to not engage in, um, to media a conversation before the cameras are actually rolling. Yeah. She, I would just add that that is like Lisa and, you know, I hadn't, you know, Lisa and I hadn't really met before the series working on the series. And so um, I quickly learned that that was Lisa's superpower. I mean, I think like my first conversation with her, she asked me like, how are you, how was your day today? Or how are you doing? And it was like, just somehow just like the way, I don't know if it's the way Lisa looks at you or into your soul or something, but it's like, you know, learned all about my family, my dog, you know, it was just like, everything it's just like everywhere i turn it's lisa's talking to somebody on our crew and she comes back she's like oh i just found out that that person's a certified nurse and a blah, blah 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 and i'm like we left you there for two seconds like she got their whole life story so it is something that like that is a superpower of lisa's to be able to connect with yeah. anyone like literally anybody that she just carry on. the drivers i mean like she'll know everything about everyone <laughs> it's like and kind of with that idea of those really organic, unexpected moments, you know, when you watch the show, it, it's clear that there's certain things that you have to prepare, that you have to put together, that you have to know this is the coverage that we're getting. We're going to go, we're going to film this thing. You know, there's clearly a lot of research and archival elements that are coming into the series as well. And yet you also really feel like this was made in a way where you let yourself have those moments of discovery and those really organic moments, you know, to suddenly be in the middle of a karaoke room where everybody's singing karaoke feels like a completely natural part of the flow as well. And so what are some of the, the ways in which you both kind of approached making the show with the rest of the team where it had that that initial structure and foundation, but really allowed to have those moments of discovery and, and to find the story along the way as well? I mean, I think, Mara, that that's what happens. You know, we I am aware of the people that I'm going to talk to. I've read their backstories. I've done my research, but but I, I, I try not to get into the nitty gritty until cameras roll. I mean, and, and, and that is what makes for, I think, really pretty natural interactions. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is I, I talk to people on camera the way we're talking now. I, I really don't think that I, I put on an artifice when I'm talking to people uh, for the show. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't interview people. I don't bring notes. Um, I've really never done that because I want the interviews to be as conversational as and yeah. as informal as possible. And so, yeah, I mean, everything that you you see is, um, you know, it is a is a pretty natural interaction. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> No, it absolutely comes across that way. And Helen, I wanted to ask a little bit about the the post-production and the editing on the series as well, because obviously you're filming these very kind of like rich in depth conversations that Lisa's having. And sometimes we're just getting a snapshot of, of what that conversation is. And you're really finding the moment that brings us into the emotional kind of connectivity the most within the story, or what's the part of the story that they told that really connects with what this person told us five minutes before that's going to go right before in the episode. Um, and so was it kind of an easy journey to really find the the parts of the conversations that you wanted to put into the show? Or did you have any moments where you were kind of toying around in the editing room and, and really finding the essence of, of those beats? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a, a it was a true collaboration. You know, I think I, I was very lucky in that I went on every single one of those episodes. So there were moments that I really that resonated with me personally. And, you know, I, I remember, you know, in the field talking with Lisa about moments that really resonated with her. 
you know, and then you have the conversations that we would have after scenes, you know, in the hotel lobby with our crew, you know, just each person, you know, from different backgrounds, like talking about, wow, it was really powerful when they said this or that, you know, and so absorbing all of those things and taking that back into the, you know, in the edit rooms. Um, and then you had, you know, the directors, each of the directors over, you know, would oversee each of the, the edits and posts as well. And so, you know, there were moments that, that they were like, this has to go in because this is a nod for something specific within my culture that I think, you know, has to make it as well. So it really was a, a true collaborative experience. Um, you know, of course there were certain things that, you know, that, you know, we were pushing for or like things that we wanted to get in there and we couldn't because we didn't have enough time. But um, yeah, I would say that, I think that part of it was also really different because, you know, again, like everybody was so personally invested that, you know, uh, would screen it for, you know, we would screen it with the editors and directors, but then I would also screen it with our, you know, PA who turned into uh, being an associate producer. Like, what do you think watching this? You know, you weren't there. Like, what are your thoughts on this, on this conversation? What are the parts that really um, make, make you feel emotional or moved you or, you know, things that maybe you didn't like, you know? And so, um, yeah, it was, it was definitely like a true collaborative experience um, that was really special. Yeah. And the scope of the show when you step back is really impressive. I mean, you were mentioning that you were filming all of this through COVID, which obviously brings a lot of logistical challenges. Every episode, you know, you're traveling to a lot of different locations and every episode is is very unique and different, as we were talking about earlier with it, with its own voice. So it really isn't even something where you can go, OK, well, we filmed the first episode, so now we know what this is and now we can replicate this for all of the other episodes. And so for both of you, what what were the most challenging aspects that you found in, in creating the show and making sure that you were you were keeping that voice fresh in every single episode without being able to just replicate what you were doing? Well, this was my first experience in the, the food world. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very specific about the fact that this isn't a cooking show. It's a food show because I don't cook. And, you know, th th there have been so many successful food and cooking shows. And I, I you know, I was nervous about, you know, would people take me seriously as someone who doesn't cook to do this show um, that uses food as a device and helen and i we come from different shows and styles and so um working on a new show a brand new show with people who you are unfamiliar with i mean i think we we, we or i have always tended to kind of default to people like again i i knew um I had worked with before and I knew would bring, bring home the goods. And so on a number of levels, I, I was nervous about how things were transpiring, but I also, because I've worked in this business for so long, know that if we get the goods in the field, you know, if, if what we collect is solid, I know no matter what, we'll get to um, a, 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 a decent, if not better product. And I knew when we went into the field that we were collecting some really precious, um, fun and illuminating pieces and, and stories. Um, some of them took a little bit longer to get to that final product. And some, uh, you know, some of our directors just, they had this very definitive vision for the episode and executed executed them just with brilliance. And how about for you, Helen? Yeah, I would say, and that's a really good point, is that we come from sort of very different um, uh, backgrounds in terms of production, um, even though, you know, it wasn't the same network, but it was just sort of different styles. And um, I think with any sort of uh, creative collaborator, right, if it's someone new, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get to know each other and figure out, like, what are the best sort of environments to like get the best sort of, you know, um, uh, conversations or, you know, what is the sort of sweet spot, you know? And I think not only with Lisa, but with our crew as well. I mean, working with, for me, it was working with a lot of people that I've never worked with before. I mean that, you know, I'm so used to when you work with a crew for a long time, you sort of have a shorthand, right? I mean, you, know, you can kind of just look at each other and hearing a conversation and know exactly where to like point your camera or like know where to be. And I think, with any crew, uh, it takes a little bit of time to get that sort of, you know, get that kind of machine going. So that took a little bit of time, but I mean, again, it was just, it was really unlike any show I've ever worked on. Um, just the experience 
And I like really miss all of our crews so much in that experience. I mean, from the very first shoot, from the very first day, I mean, the kind of conversations that we were capturing on camera, but to me, what was so kind of poignant were the conversations we were having off camera as well between the crews, you know? Like Lisa mentioned, she's been working in this business for a long time. I've only been working in it for 10 plus years, but to be able to share for all of us, you know, my two, the two DPs that we had across the series also were like, this is the first time I've worked with so many Asians on, on a shoot before. It's usually we're one of two maybe, right? In this sort of space. Um, and it was so special to be able to share those things and um, to kind of talk about sort of shared experiences we've had, not just as, as Asian Americans, but as Asian Americans working in this industry. Um, so that was, yeah, that was really, really special, but I think it, it definitely took, you know, just a little bit of time for us to all kind of learn each other's styles and, and, and like Lisa said, it's a new show. Um, so with no format, I mean, you know, just a concept and, you know, a treatment on paper, but you know, what really happens, it's like, there's a lot of, you know, things that go into that. And, um, yeah, it took a little bit of time to kind of get it going, but once we did, we, we just kind of all looked at each other like. I don't know, I think this is something special, but um, yeah, it's been really wonderful to kind of see the response that people have been feeling that on screen as well, so. I really love hearing all, all of that detail from, from making the show from both of you and hopefully we'll get some more seasons so we can get at least the rest of the 20 episodes that you've already come up with in your minds. Thank you so much, Lisa and Helen for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having us, it was really yeah. fun. Thank you so much for having us.